This video is about tuning uh, mostly the main jet and its relationship to the engine oil that you use. These out here are two uh, diagrams of piston heat from different research papers that I perused and you can see that the difference between the dome and uh, the first ring land on this one is 78 percent and this one's 84 percent so you know the average of that is about 80 percent this being 80 percent of, of that so that has uh, some bearing on this subject uh, let me just work my way towards that um, what I'd like to point out here is that the jetting has to do with two things it has to do with engine power and it has to do with protection of the engine because the more gasoline comes to the engine the cooler it will run the gasoline cools the engine parts so I can't say it's it's just about power and I can't say it's just about protection it's about both and of course you have to have protection you can't set it to cease you just it's just that'd be a ludicrous idea Okay, so let's just go over what a piston seizure is because that's a, a limiting factor here. When the oil evaporates off of the, the cylinder and the rings uh, due to the heat of the piston, it will allow too much friction between the rings and the, uh, the cylinder and the, the piston, you know, because you know, once once that oil is gone from here, it's going to heat up here, and that heat's going to travel down here, and this is the result. The piston expands because of heat, and presses too much against the cylinder, and you get these streaks where the contact happens. So, microscopically, you've got a little, very thin oil film on the cylinder between the rings and the cylinder and it's it's drawn in blue right here and we're without the blue right here which is means that uh, the oil has evaporated off all oils have a flash point temperature and I'm not talking about the the temperature at which the temperature at which the uh, the product is labeled this is my page on uh, uh, jetting in relation to the, the plug and other things and the engine oil. It's a very good read and it's, and it's in depth and it's, it's actually it's pretty eye opening to really think of the, the subject in a whole new way. Click here and go to the second page on the same subject and right here are the oil CAS numbers which is an ID number which for different base oils their flash point temperature which you can see ranges from uh, well those are mostly solvents I'm not even going to look at them 113 to 238 that's a two-fold difference right there and um, these are the, the carbon numbers, and this is basically what the oil is. This is my page on engine oils. And it lists a, a, good, a good number of oils uh, which have the data uh, published for them. I'm just, I'm totally not interested in, in a manufacturer that's going to be so secretive about what they are selling that they're not even going to tell me so just the oils that have good uh, data available for them are listed here and each one lists the CAS numbers of the base oils that it is made from okay so um, it's a good it's a good read it's it's a long read actually lots, lots of oils then it just totally explains everything. It's 
it's probably highly recommended to read this to really get an understanding of the importance of oil and how it relates to jetting and engine protection. So these, uh, given the different percentage of the different base oils in each in each product, uh, and averaging them together, I came up with these flashpoint temperatures for these these oils, which are listed right here. And this is the graph showing that they they basically run from 60% uh, of of max all the way up. So, you know, like um, the difference between five, Motul 510 and Motul 710 is uh, number 7 and number 12. Number 7 is right here, and number 12 is right here. You can see a pretty big difference between them. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. I don't know if it's fair to average them together. If it's not, then this would be more reve revealing uh, the percentage of uh, group four or five synthetic oil in each product and in some ways it, it's it still parallels the 510 is number five and the 710 is 14 so you got five here you got 14 over here even the bigger difference but still um, it's on the same portion of the slope uh, the, the synthetic oil is what is what uh, protects more. Look at these flashpoint temperatures. The flashpoint is the temperature at which the oil will start to vaporize off of the cylinder. Bye bye oil, metal to metal. That's what you don't want. Okay. So it's very important. So the general rule here is, is the higher the percentage of synthetic oil, the higher that, that cylinder temperature can be without vaporizing the oil off of it. This is a, a test I did, uh, just seeing how flammable the oils are. This is a fully synthetic oil. And these two are non-synthetic. You can see a pretty healthy flame over here and very little here. It, the synthetics are just not that prone to burning or vaporizing off. So if you're running a, a really high performance engine, it's getting hotter and fuck. And you want to protect it. You don't want it to seize. So I'm going to say stay away from all the engine oils that are don't have any synthetic in them at all, which would include Yamalube and Dominator. This is, is a typical post on a, a typical two-stroke form on uh, Facebook. The rookie shows a picture of his spark plug and says, how's it look, guys? You know, what do you think? Am I too rich or too lean? This is what I think of that. It's a stupid question. Because it has more to do with your engine oil. Up to what temperature it can protect your engine at. You're running a, a low flashpoint temperature engine oil. You've got to have a richer, a richer jetting and a darker plug. You're ra running a fully synthetic engine oil. You can uh, jet it leaner and have a leaner colored plug. So it's it's just it's just not. <laughs> I don't even have words for it. It just blows my mind. I mean, when I finally realized this, the you know it's like yeah. Now I I, I understand the subject. And it's not about getting the right color. Um, I can show you this spark plug on my uh, air-cooled two-stroke, 
and I know it's jetted just right, and it's a lot darker than most other people's water-cooled bikes, and it needs to be richer because the engine's running hotter. Okay, so, um, you know, talking about using the same engine oils, of course. Another thing that greatly varies is the uh, the compression ratio. The higher the compression, the more engine heat. The more, the better either the better oil you need to use or the richer the jetting has to be. So there's a lot of variability as far as the uh, the plug color. It's just not a valid question. I'm sorry, it just, it just isn't. Unfortunately, I'm not a, a funded research organization. If I was, I would take each one of these oils listed here and I would do a really good test on each one to see at what point they burn. The only test I've done is, is I compared a synthetic oil to a non-synthetic and they both did burn in a ceramic coated frying pan. So synthetic is not, synthetic is still oil, it's still, it's still petroleum, it's just been manipulated a bit. So yeah, they're, they're both oils and oil does burn at a certain temperature. So I can't tell you exactly what temperature each oil burns at. So um, if, if I knew, I could, um, if I knew this temperature at which the oil turns black under the piston dome, I would know, using the 80% rule, what the temperature is here and then compare it to the flash point of the different oil to know whether or not uh, you need to upgrade to a better oil or you need to, to richen your jetty. But I don't know that. So where does that leave us? A professional tuner usually knows from experience, from trial and error, what, uh, what his limit is. You know, when they start to get the little streaks, they know, you know, they. they when they're in the in the research phase of getting their their racing engine just right, they they tear it down all the time. And if they tear it down and they find some streaks, they're like, "Oops, uh, we need to we need to richen the jetting just a bit." And then they look at the spark plug color, they look at the top of the piston, and they'll say, "Ah, okay, I'm gonna remember this." That's that's the limit. I don't want it to look that that light colored on the uh, the the plug, and um, yeah, just uh, the underside. So if if I knew those temperatures, I would I would be able to tell you all you need to go by is is the piston underside when that turns black. It's, it's still a general rule, and, and some tuners do go by that. But I'm, I'm, you know, just being a bit of a perfectionist, I'm, I'm thinking it's, there's still too much data lacking to be able to, to fully, confidently say you don't want the piston underside to be very black. My general feeling right now is a, is a little bit black is okay. But I would still go by how the piston looks when you tear it down. What, what I recommend is um, jetting for power. Uh, you know, start rich and you go lean, you go lean, you go lean, and you drop off in power. You're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go back here. And each run is a short run. So if you go too lean, you don't have a really long run to seize the engine. You know, one short strike is all it takes. So then you've got the, you know, you, you, you come back to that, to that jetting size. And um, then you can take it apart and uh, look at the piston. Maybe it has some streaks from using that one, one jet too lean. Okay, clean the piston up, put it all back together, run it again, take it apart, see how it looks. Yes, I know, it's a hassle. Yes, I know. Please stop. I don't want to hear it again. It's too complex. Blah, 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 blah. 
I like the uh, YouTube channel Two Stroke Stuffing. Their motto is, or his motto is, easy ain't worth anything. And that's the way it is, you know. I know you want to just ride. You just want your engine to be perfect. But if you're doing any modifications, or if you're uh, tuning it for the best power, it, it's, it's a technical subject. Two strokes are a technical subject. They just are. Uh, for instance, this is my page. And this is the list of my uh, two stroke spreadsheets. And it took me about seven years to make them. You think that was easy? No. But I wanted to do something uh, to help um, get me more on track on each subject, not thinking that um, thinking that I could uh, fill the gap in some way in, uh, in the area of uh, computer programs for two strokes. And I think I can accomplish that. So, but it wasn't easy. Pipe design program. I'm like, I want to go skateboarding. I don't want to do this. I'm like, I'm sorry. My inner perfectionist said, I'm sorry. If you want it right, you have to do this. Okay, okay. It took me five years to make it. It's done. It's still cheap as fuck, so <laughs> I highly recommend it. Uh...